This week on Stogie Geek Shorts, we take a look at one of the iconic limited edition series in the boutique cigar industry, the E.P. Carrillo Short Run Series. Stay tuned as we take a walk down memory lane. This is a Security Weekly production. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Mm. Welcome, everybody, to Stogie Geek Shorts. Will Cooper here at Studio C in North Carolina. Mark and Riley at the controls at the Vilger North America Studios in Rhode Island. And today we're going to take a walk down memory lane, and we're going to look at really what I consider to be one of the iconic uh, annual limited edition series in the industry, and that's the E.P. Carrillo Short Run. And um, it's a series that's been around for six years. It made its debut back in 2010. And as the name implies, it's a short run. It's a short production run. And the idea is that E.P. Carrillo has released this uh, once a year. They've released a limited number of cigars. And then for the most part, with a few exceptions, the cigar is kind of faded into the sunset and um, never to be seen again. And um, un- until this year, it is, is a little bit of a different twist, and we'll, we'll kind of talk through that. But let's go back and start with the uh, Short Run 2010. It made its debut, uh, as the year indicates, in 2010. Now, one thing I'll say is before we get into the Short Runs, there's another limited edition series called the Edition Limitada. Um, which is a different, which is different from the short run. Um, the Edition Limitada typically was a one by Tola release, as we'll see with the short runs. Most of them have been multi by Tola releases. But um, starting in short run 2010, Ernesto Perez Carrillo went back to you know he he had, this is now his own. He went back to running his own company the year beforehand. Um, so he released the first short run 2010, and when he went with a rapper he is really associated with quite a bit, the Ecuadorian Sumatra rapper. Um, and he does that blend over guts of a Nicaraguan binder and a combination of Nicaraguan and Dominican fillers, which is a typical Ernesto Perez Carrillo Jr. blend. You know, you tend to see that Ecuadorian wrapper over the Nicaraguan and Dominican um, fillers. He released that in three sizes, a, uh, a Robusto, a Toro, and a uh, 6x60. And what was a little bit unique about that particular release is um, about um, about a year later, there was actually a fourth size of the short run 2010. It was called the number four. It was a five and an eighth by 42 Corona. And that was released as a limited edition uh, retail exclusive to our friends at Federal Cigar up in, in New Hampshire. And uh, again, same blend, but that's the only short run that was, as far as I know, that was a shop exclusive and that was done in the Corona size. Now, moving ahead to 2011, and this is actually the one I am smoking. I am smoking one from the uh, the 2011 series. Uh, we have the Short Run 2011. A uh, big change with this cigar is the uh, wrapper. So Ernesto Perez Carrillo moved to a Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. Um, and again, over that Nicaraguan binder and guts of a Nicaraguan and Dominican filler. Um, same three sizes, the 4 and 7 eighths by 50 Robusto, a 5 and 7 eighths by 52 Toro, and a 6 and a quarter by 60 uh, immensos, he calls it. Um, the Habano, this was one of these cigars that I could tell you, I'm smoking it now, it's five years old. This is one of those you wanted to put away, have some age on it. Uh, fantastic cigar, it really came into its own after like about a year of age, and I'm telling you, um, these are great. So occasionally you can find some of these, you know, if you kind of look through the nooks and crannies of a humidor, you can start finding these 2010s and 11s. They've kind of... It's hard to believe that I remember when these came out. Now they have kind of this collectible type of, um, a, you know, collectible type of thing now to it, which is kind of interesting. 2012 short run. Uh, we saw a little bit. We saw a change with the with the short run 2012. Um, in that uh, this was uh, branded the E.P. Carrillo New Wave Connecticut short run 2012. So the New Wave Connecticut was um, a line that was released by EPC the year before. It had a lot of success. 
and Ernesto Perez Carrillo Jr. decided to use that line as inspiration for this blend. And he actually, it wasn't just the New Wave Connecticut line that he used inspiration for. He also used um, inspiration from his core line Maduro line, and I'll explain what that is. So what he did for the short run 2012 is he took that Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper from the New Wave Connecticut. Um, then what he did is he took the Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper from the core line Maduro, and he made that the binder. So in other words, the core line Maduro's wrapper became the binder here. And then he's using Nicaraguan and Dominican tobaccos from the uh, in the filler, which were also part of the core line Maduro. And again, he did those same three sizes, the 50 ring Robusto, the 52 ring Toro, and the six by the six and a quarter by 60 Gordo there. Um, this cigar actually was a was a very well received as well. This cigar actually became the inspiration for another line that was released, and it's one of Paul Sidorian's favorites, and that is the New Wave Reserver, which you'll see the New Wave Reserver is another Connecticut shade line. It has a different um it has a different um, excuse me, profile than the original New Wave Connecticut. It has a d- different profile than this short run. Um, the one difference I was told is while the blend components are similar, the wrap, the Connecticut shade wrapper is different on that New Wave Reserver. But um, the inspiration was definitely there from, uh, the, from that line. We move ahead to 2013. And a lot of folks um, will argue that this might have been the apex of um, the, sh- the short line series. I certainly agree with that. That's the short run 2013. Um, you know, when this one was announced, it was kind of, uh, it didn't have a lot of fanfare. Um, namely, it was going back to um, a Sumatra blend. But the difference is um, he's using a Dominican Puerto Cubano binder on this one, as opposed to, you know, on the 2010, which used the um, Nicaraguan binder. So, Basically, what I was saying is the uh, the Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper had been used on the 2010, and now it's being used on the 2013. So you got that Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, Peloto Cubano binder, and a combination of Nicaraguan uh, and, and Dominican fillers in that. Uh, this cigar was an absolute home run. Uh, again, it came in the same sizes as well, the 50 uh, Robusto, the 52 uh, Toro, which they actually called a Corona Gorda here for some reason, and that 60 ring gauge Gordo as well. Uh, but this, in my opinion, fantastic cigar. It ranks as probably one of the best releases, in my opinion, from EPC. Uh, but one of the fun things you could do with these is compare and contrast and see how they go. So that was the EP Carrillo 2013 short run. Moving forward. Now, we get into 2014, and I think we started to see a change in direction with this series. Um, I found that the series got a little more experimental um, in terms of the blends that Ernesto was doing. So for 2014, he decided to take inspiration from one of his existing lines, like he did in 2012 with the New Wave Connecticut. For 2014, he used the E.P. Carrillo Inch as his inspiration. And he went with a Dominican Corojo 2006 wrapper. Um, He went with a Nicaraguan Corojo binder and Nicaraguan and Dominican filler. So Corojo, Dominican Corojo is not something that we've seen Ernesto Perez Carrillo use before. So this was, I think, um, I know he's used some Ecuadorian Corojos on some other lines that were released after this, namely the Inch C99. But this Dominican one, I believe, is the only blend where he used this particular wrapper on it. Um, He also changed the sizes up to go with the inch format. So he did it in the uh, inch 60 size, which is the 5 and 7 eighths by 60, the inch 62, excuse me, the number 62, which is a 5 by 62, and the number 64, which is a 6 and a quarter uh, by 64, which is basically the diameter of that cigar is an inch. Um, What I'll say about this cigar, it was an experimental cigar. I didn't think it was a bad cigar, but after really the home runs he hit with the first four years, this one was a little bit of a downer, but, you know, I do give him some credit. It was something a little different. I think the cigar did sell well, and I did. there was a profile for that. So as far as that one goes, the, uh, the E.P. Carrillo um, Inch uh, Short Run 2014, that was, the fifth in, that was the fifth installment of this series. Now, we move forward to 2016, excuse me, 2015. 
jumping ahead of myself. Short run 2015. Again, there was a little bit of a change in, in kind of going a little more experimental what Ernesto was doing here. And he once again kind of changed up the wrapper. And he went with a uh, Jalapa Criollo 98 wrapper. Again, I don't think Criollo is something I've seen a lot used by Ernesto as a rapper. You know, Ernesto is known for those Ecuadorian rappers. He's known for those Connecticut broad leaves. But, uh, you know, as far as Nicaraguan rappers, I hadn't seen too much of that. But he did use a, a Criollo uh, wrapper there over a Nicaraguan binder and Nicaraguan and Dominican filler. Uh, he went uh, He went with a little more traditional sizes with this. Um, you know, again, back to the traditional size, a 5x50 uh, called a Napoleon, a 6x50 coup called the Vencedores, and a 6x60 Imperios. Um, you could see from our picture, the packaging was changed up a little. You could see there was a, a new logo that was introduced. And as we'll see, that new logo, it didn't last very long because in 2016, Ernesto went back and... Um, he kind of rebranded the whole portfolio, as we've talked a lot about on Stogie Geeks. Uh, this was a cigar. I think it was a good cigar. Again, I don't think it was up to those first four years, but it's a cigar that's come along very nicely with age, and it's definitely one I would um, encourage folks to check out. Last day, last but not least, there's actually uh, the Short Run 2016. And if you've been following uh, along on Cigar Coop or Stogie Geeks News, uh, you'll see there's actually two short run 2016s. So I'll explain that. So in 2000, uh, earlier this year, the EP Carrillo short run 2016 was introduced. Um, as far as what this cigar uses, um, he's working with an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. So it's the first time since 2011 that he's working with that. Um, he's working with all Nicaraguan tobacco in this blend. So Nicaraguan binder and Nicaraguan filler. And in there, he's using some Criollo 98 in the filler, um, which again, it's a little different than when he used the Criollo 98 as the wrapper in, in 15. But he's using some Criollo 98 in the filler from a region called Somoto, which you don't often hear a lot about. Um, but they do grow tobacco in this region. And uh, if you followed us on Stogie Geeks, as a cigar that was originally released called the Logio LSV, and that original Loyo LSV used a wrapper from Samoto, but they did eventually change it off of there. Um, the other change that was made, or a couple of other changes, um, it only came in one size, a 6x52 they called a Super Toro. So that was the first time uh, that the short run just came in a single size. It features some new packaging, uh, as you can see in, in the photo, in the graphic, that we now have uh, more of a uh, more of EPC's kind of more elegant packaging, more of that gold foil um, that was introduced across the whole portfolio. Now you're seeing it with the Short Run 16. And in fact, the Short Run 16 was the first EP Carrillo cigar to debut that new uh, kind of banding and, and logo design there. Now, another catch is that the short run 2016, it was done with an original limited production run of 2,500 boxes, but a decision was made recently to take that regular production. And much of the reason for that was FDA driven. You know, uh, to comply with regulations, uh, it's gonna cost money. Limited edition cigars don't have a good return on investment in terms of uh, applying for that compliance, applying for that compliance. So, but a, but a long-term regular production release does. So E.P. Carrillo made that decision to take the short run 2016 uh, regular production. But I mentioned there were two cigars. Uh, there is a second short run 2016 that should be hitting the stores. It's called the short run 2016 Nicaragua. So it's an all Nicaraguan cigar, uh, completely including a Nicaraguan wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, Nicaraguan filler. Still going to be in the 6x52 six by six by size. And it's also going to be a regular production cigar like the short run 2016. So the unfortunate thing is this may be the end of the run of the short runs. But uh, during that time, we definitely got some outstanding cigars. And I think now some real collectible type of stuff, so, you know, definitely the things you want to search out. If you're, especially if you're an APC fan, definitely search these things out in your humidor. Anyway, that's going to do it for this edition of Stogie Geek Short. Be sure to check out Stogie Geeks, uh, the main show. 6.30 p.m. on Mondays. You can check that out at www.stogiegeeks.com or you can check out Stogie Geeks News, the internet uh, only cigar podcast dedicated to cigar news at www.stogienews.tv or Stogie Geeks Shorts, this show, www.stogieshorts.tv 
And for news and reviews, be sure to check us out at Cigar Coop, www.cigar-coop.com. Thanks, everybody.